For the past few days, a 14-year-old student has been fighting for his life in Apollo Hospital. His family says that he was ragged so much that someone even tried to kill him. The police says that he was ragged so much that he's been driven to the point of suicide and it was an attempt to suicide which has landed him now in the ICU. On Agenda tonight, we'll be hearing other such stories. That family of that 14-year-old boy was also meant to be here but because his position is critical in hospital, he couldn't join us today, his family couldn't join us today. But we have other people who will tell us their own stories of bullying. But first, another student who used to be in Sindhya school, who was a classmate of this 14-year-old boy, he tells us his story. Admission ke kuch din baad se hi hamari ragging shuru ho gayi. Ham log ne pehle to sehte gaye thodi din hota, uske baad jab ham bahot hone laga, to ham logon ne house master se bataya. उन्होंने जब कुछ नहीं किया तब हम लोगों ने प्रिंसिपल से बताया तो वो सीनियर्स हमको और मारा करते थे खाना चुरवा चोरी करवाते थे बैक बैक कॉरिडोर लाइनअप होता था पाइप से ऊपर बुलाते थे और हमेशा काम देते थे मेरी स्थिति ऐसी हो गई थी या तो मैं स्कूल छोड़ देता या तो मैं अपने आप कुछ कर लेता वो कहते थे कि ये तो कुछ नहीं है हमारे टाइम पे तो और ज़्यादा गंदा सलूक किया जाता था हॉकी से मारते थे लेकिन अभी भी हॉकी से मारा जा रहा था वो कहते थे कि ऐसे बहुत गंदी एक एक घंटे के लिए मुर्गा बनाया जाता है तो उनको तो पंद्रह मिनट के बनाते हैं ऐसा करते थे वैसे करते थे so we're trying to get at the bottom of this what are the things that could have been done to prevent this let me just introduce my panel here this evening we have dr jitendra nagpal of moolchand hospital who works very closely with schools on bullying and such issues we have amita wattal who's the head of the national schools progressive union and they, she also has worked on bullying and other such issues. And we have the Jinder Luthra, senior Delhi police official, who can tell us if there's a legal output to all of this. But the first question really is whether the school could have done something. And for that, we need to hear a personal story. And that's what we hear, have over here. You actually went through bullying. You experienced it. And it went so bad that you had to leave the country. Yeah. First left your college and then left your country. Yeah. Tell us about that. The thing is, it was so critical because like uh, our laws are there, but it has, it has not been like compliance by everyone. The thing is that. So basically there is not that much difference between a bullying and a ragging. Ragging is a severe form of bullying. Bullying is like anyone can do rather than bashments also. But for ragging, there is particular relation between senior and junior. Tell us what happened with you. Uh, with me, it was like I was severely ragged with my senior. Just because of that, uh, I was in first year and I was supporting my batchmates on behalf as a first year representative. So at that time, like uh, they pressurized me that much that I was bound to quit the college because college was not in support with me because that uh, student was a relative of college management. So that principal and all the, my professor was in pressure of the management. Okay. So this was the critical condition. And when this case approached to the ministry and UGC and DCI, it came into existence that the guy uh, refused the orders of uh, Honorable Supreme Court also. So at that level, like many people are involved and corruption was also there in that case. So now actually the good thing is that you're, you're helping other students, of yeah, right. other victims of yeah. bullying and bragging. Yeah. So when you heard about this case, the Sindhya school case, yeah. what did you immediately think? Obviously there was like, uh, first of all, uh, it was true because maybe rather that uh, that batchmates or senior whatever they just try to do this thing or, or else like that student was that much pressurized by these people maybe he was bound to do suicide because it is a thing that is like bullying is very common in all schools but the thing is like most of the cases are not reported and it is very common okay what we know till now is that three teachers were arrested because of this incident they are now of course out on bail but the question we are asking is from the facts that we know not all the facts of command where did the school go wrong Amitabh Bhattan where do you think it went wrong you know firstly I think arresting teachers is not really the answer because uh, schools have become very vulnerable they've become targets of situations but what I do want to say is that it's imperative that firstly we have to strengthen counseling systems in school there have to be counsellors who are accessible to children. And if you have a school of at least, say, 2,000, 2,500 kids, 
then definitely you have to have a certain level of counsellors and every teacher has to be a counsellor. What worries a person is that why was it so that the child did not have the kind of confidence to walk up to any one teacher so and tell them that... It looks like this school, this boarding school, where the 14 year old went to, didn't have enough counsellors. No, I wouldn't say that. I would, I would definitely say that it certainly needed more access to people, to adults, especially because it was a boarding school. So there should have been access of adults to children where they could go and meet any teacher and say, I'm going through such a difficult time. Now, what was it within that child that A, himself he was he didn't have enough self-confidence why wasn't his confidence built up even at home why couldn't he even rung up his parents and tell them that look i am facing this terrible situation so wh why was there no connectivity why wasn't there any communication that the child could share with the and parent the or with the wrong. school so okay. uh, either ways either ways i think it is a parent child a parent school relationship which is very important okay. so both of them really have to think about it the parents and the school you know the thing is that we don't have anyone from the family their families of course blaming the school very much and we want all of you to kind of give your inputs of what we know from the case but perhaps it helps to also hear of other experiences. You have a particular experience in school of being bullied. Do you want to share that with us? Yeah, absolutely I would like to share it. Actually, I was an 8th standard and some of my seniors, uh, they bullied me. Actually, I just went to water tap for filling my water bottle. So, uh, some of my seniors came down and uh, they, they were like, that we will fill the bottle first. I was like, I just came and I'll just go in two minutes. They were like, no, we are seniors, you have to respect me. I was like, okay, you may go on. And then too, they were like, you go back to your class. I was like, I will do it after you are done. Uh, but they started pushing me, they started threatening me that, uh, who the hell are you, we are seniors, we are, you are a newcomer and you should respect us. And I was being bullied by them, I was being thrashed by them, they slapped me even. I went to, I went to my class and I was like, so upset and so threatened that I did not tell my class teacher even. Ms. Vatar here talks about school counsellors. Did you have a school counsellor who you could go to? Well, actually there was no such school counsellor whom I could go to. I just went to my home and I did not share it, the experience with anyone. Uh, I just asked my mom that I don't want to go to school. And, and how long did you stay away from school? I guess it was approximately a week. And moreover, it was uh, the time of examinations. And how long did your bullying last? Well, actually, uh, I did go to my coachings. I did not go to my school, but I did go to my coachings. They also, I don't How know. How long did you stay away from the school? Actually, it was, uh, I told you, approximately a week, I, I stayed away from the school. And even they used to come to my coachings. And I was like so threatened that I stopped my coaching too. And then uh, I slowly, I told my father about it and my mom. So they went to me, they went with me to the school. And then they talked to the principal. Uh, the students were resigated and then the matter was so, uh, sorted out but you know the impact on me was like I was so threatened that my examinations were spoiled my 8th standard really? it, yeah it, it, it was spoiled so like it was a really bad experience uh, for me you know in the Lutra we've seen the teachers get arrested over here they are out on bail now is there something the police can do in advance or is this something for counsellors and psychologists to handle? You know, our uh, schools and colleges, they are very sacred, very innocent and very delicate places because our children go there for education and for building up their future. So my personal view is police or the strong arm of the law should be completely out of these mm -hmm. sacred prisons. Mm -hmm. Unless the situation crosses a level. Of course, in this case, though I don't have my personal knowledge about it, but it seems from the reports that situation crossed a level, a level where police or the law when should it came come to in. Abetment to suicide. Yes, it became a legal issue, so there you cannot avoid it. But otherwise, I believe whatever kind of bullying, etc., is, is there. there a liability in this case of the school teachers? Legal liability. You know. Uh, this kind of conclusion I cannot give unless because we I don't have know the details. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's fair enough. But my point is that such issues, I mean not this particular issues, but issues of bullying, harassment should be dealt with counselling, okay, mediation I'll come back to you and on that caregiving. Because 
I want to ask you then, if that is the case, why is ragging a criminal offence and not bullying? So I, I'll come back to you for that. Dr. Nankar, you heard that young man's case. We, before that, we of course know about the extreme. In his case, of course, it's, you know, he says it lasted a week. Yep. He stayed away from school. And I think within a year it got sorted, right? Within a year it got sorted. So he was lucky. Uh, unfortunately, the 14-year-old who's in hospital isn't, hasn't been so lucky. Where do you think the problem has risen? Uh, first of all, I think um, uh, legal and police protection to schools is not the answer at all. We, we know that these are sacred spaces as we are agreeing to sir also and what madam has said. But I wish to reiterate one point. I think uh, we are becoming a very helpless society when it comes to bringing up children. Uh, bullying as a suffering, an intense yes. suffering in young minds below 18 years who are often not only denied and condemned help but ignored also. I think these are spate of cases which are emerging across the country. Yeah. Almost everybody is either physically, emotionally, uh, sexually or some form of bullying goes on inadvertently indirectly in a surrogate manner and they are reported more from the residential schools as we come across the statistics it world is over more prevalent, yeah. yeah the prevalence is high 24 7 people are together the peer pressure is high the peer approval is high the peer identity is very high the peer rejection is very high and in this case we can see this is what has happened the gang wars and the cliques and all that form and i completely endorse opinion uh, of uh, amita ji where i think the addressal system is so poor mm. and we talk of international standards of schooling systems the People can't walk up to a close confidant, a bona fide close confidant to even address agony, suffering, which is condemned, denied and often exploited. An exploitation to the extent that one's uh, self-esteem is exploited, one's physical body is exploited at times. Where are we heading for? I think the whole child rights movement becomes a helpless movement when we are not able to provide portals of happiness, dignity, self-respect and a yeah. degree of uh, safety and security to children. So I, I squarely blame it on a system which does not understand the child's uh, right to feel happy in school and does not allow addressal uh, both indirectly or directly through the counsellors or the principals or the teachers. And let's see how that plays out in individual cases. Yeah. You wanted to talk about a particular case that you know of bullying, right? So tell us what happened. मैम मेरी एक रिलेटिव थी उनके साथ में रैगिंग हुई थी उनको रात भर ठंड में बाहर बैठा दिया गया था जिससे दो दिन के लिए कहाँ पे कॉलेज में कॉलेज में एमबीए के लिए दिल्ली के एक एमबीए कॉलेज में उनको बाहर ठंड में बैठा दिया गया था उनके सीनियर्स के द्वारा और दो दिनों तक वो जो है कॉलेज नहीं जा पाई थी और उससे क्या प्रभाव पड़ा उन पर उस पर दो दिन तक तो कॉलेज नहीं जा पाई इसके अलावा कोई शिकायत उन्होंने नहीं की जिससे कि आगे सीनियर्स के द्वारा उनको परेशान ना किया जाए क्योंकि एंटी रैगिंग सेल वगैरह कॉलेज में बनाए तो जाते हैं लेकिन वो आज की डेट में प्रभावकारी नहीं है फर्स्ट जस्ट टू क्लैरिफाई अमिताभ बच्चन इज रैगिंग द सेम एज बुलिंग no it's not of course not the same no it's it's not the, it's, it's not, not. The it's different. It different firstly in uh, let me tell you about school at school level bullying can happen between peers there isn't a senior junior business at all anybody who is smart who feels that they are smarter yeah. they are more stronger they are more aggressive because today everything is band bajao uska band bajao this has become the culture of today and and it's you see it in the fms you see it all around so you young people start growing up with a culture of aggression and they feel the louder they are the more they are acceptable but, but you, but so you, it becomes a peer thing that that that, a, that that makes it a new phenomena but hasn't bullying no but identity existed. crisis has taken place in a very big way today the identity is linked with the louder i am the more aggressive i am the more macho i am the more i'll be accepted which is ridiculous and so what happens is people who are sensitive people who aren't who don't react like that then automatically become the victims of the perpetrator and the perpetrator can be just a boy in your class can be a boy younger than you yeah. but can be can just be more aggressive than you can be a so boy senior bullying. than you so that's bullying in schools and so bullying is also cyber bullying it's a huge bullying that's going on people have committed suicide because of cyber bullying because people have taken out pictures of 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 girls on and morphed them and put them there and the girls feel so nervous As to even come out do you see many instances of that C certainly certainly cyber bullying so has become very common we we are constantly having experts coming in no if somebody a girl comes and tells you i am being bullied like that someone has put my pictures up what do you do no firstly you know schools by and large it's very important that teachers that we do it whether it is teachers or whether it is the principal or the counselor we have access to everybody is connected on whatsapp 
So very often you know what people are talking to each other. So you actually have access to it yourself. So in a certain sense, you know the problem before it comes in, especially if you're connected. So when situations like this happen, we have huge group, when, when, it, when things like this happen, you have group gatherings, you invite people together, children come together, they have conversations. But the, but the offending boy or girl, no, whoever's done that, would you uh, ex suspend them, expel them, what would happen? See, expelling has never been the answer to okay. doing things like this. Then what the, the most important thing is there has to be very serious counselling, there has to be psychological counselling, there has to be serious medical counselling and without the parent you cannot move forward. Okay. So parents have to be, see the home is the first school. So, so parents cannot parents have to be accountable, they okay. have to be accountable.